And on that note, happy Friday the 13th, and welcome back to another episode of Scary Siren Fridays. Happy New Year, hope your Christmas was good. I just want to quickly talk about, like, Jason-related stuff. I couldn't do any review for, like, the third one. This just snuck up on me, just like... Also, my mom got me a Pennywise shirt for Christmas, so that was cool. I love it. There have been numerous reports about a movie coming out that is supposed to come out this year, apparently. There's just rumors running around that a Friday the 13th movie has been worked on by the other guy. While well, a Friday the 13th series titled Crystal Lake is going to come out sometime next year, maybe? Or this year? I don't know. That director, the other director, said that. If this show does so well and it manages to get up to 10 seasons, he's going to send Jason up to space, which basically means that each season goes by. Season one is going to be about the mother. Season two is going to be like bag head Jason. Season three is going to be Jason, like a recreation of the movies, which I think is kind of cool. But at the same time, it's also kind of a little lazy. It's just rehashing everything. We've already seen him go to Manhattan. We've already seen how Jason first started killing. It's better than nothing. We're getting a movie and a show. More Jason is better than no Jason. The horror icon himself is returning after Michael Myers has now finished his whole thing. Scream is continuing on. And we got The Exorcist coming up, which I don't know if people even care about that. It's kind of cool that all these horror icons are coming back. We're just getting Jason, Michael, Ghostface, all these other characters coming back to the big screen one more time, at least for now. Now on to the Megan review. I figured I might as well just do these Scary Siren Friday videos all together. I thought Megan was an all right movie. It wasn't a good horror movie. It wasn't a bad horror movie. It was just all right. Gemma, I have some issues with. She's more focused on her work than helping a child who's just been in a traumatic experience with a car crash and seen her parents die. Now she's parentless. There's apparently a family out there who would take her in. The whole movie, she just didn't feel like caring about taking care of this child until Megan started popping up like, You know, I'm doing your job for you. You created me for this specific thing. Now you're getting mad because I'm doing your job. This is why you're gonna die later. Why would you bother taking her in as a guardian? When you're just not going to fix her, help her out, get her through these hard times, at least, even though it's not going to go away. I understand parents dying is a big deal. It just felt like she wasn't a good parent at all. But she made up for it later on as she slowly started realizing that what I did was a mistake. This is what I should be doing. This is not what I should have done. Therefore, I'm going to rewrite my mistakes. I'm going to get rid of Megan. I'm just going to continue on and try to do my best as a guardian be a better step parent the katie kind of felt emotionless throughout the whole movie which i guess might have been on purpose because of the whole parents dying thing half the time when she's being happy she's angry she's sad she's excited most of the time it's just like the same face it's like like that face that same face that she uses throughout the whole movie to show her emotions and sometimes when she's sad or when she's happy I cannot tell her which one it is. Sometimes I can see she's excited. And sometimes I can see when she's angry, especially in that scene where Gemma takes Megan away from her and she's very upset about it. And sometimes I can tell when she's sad because of the whole, again, Megan being taken away from her after getting this whole close bond towards her. I feel like that's what Child's Play 2019 should have been, where Andy and Chucky should have had a way more closer bond than what they had in the movie. Whereas in this movie, right from the beginning, Megan gets an attachment by bonding with them just by touching Megan's hand. And throughout the whole movie, they're just bonded together and are very attached until like the therapist comes in and says, Hey, lady, this is not a good idea. If you try and take her away from her now, you're going to have a bad problem. And that's what Gemma was like, oh, oh yeah, that's true. That's true. And now we get to Megan. She's fun. She's like the best part of this whole movie. Kills she did were mostly disappointing, especially with the first one. If you like dogs, don't watch this movie. The rest of the other kills, especially with the neighbor, while that was cool, just cuts immediately. At the desk, it happens off screen. The only two on screen kills I think were there was the boss of Gemma and then herself. That was it. Some of her kills were just completely goofy. There's a scene with the kid. She's grabbing her ear and it's just like pulling and pulling and all you just see is ear that you can tell is completely makeup and it just looks so goofy like some sort of cartoon where tom just grabs jerry's ear and just pulls that's what it looked like so tell me why that kid when he took the shoe off threw it on the floor 
proceed to get on top of her. I thought this grown ass child was about to do something very inappropriate. You cannot tell me I wasn't the only one who thought that. Why did he have the need to remove her shoe at all? Like, what, what the, what the fuck? She's actually very threatening when she wants to be. Because she's an AI, she can do anything. She can mess around with the electronics in the house. It's like some sort of fear everyone has. Everyone's worried electronics are going to rise up. AI is going to come after us. The movie is also a way of telling you this is not good. Keep your kids on a limited schedule on electronics and such. In the final battle with Megan and Gemma, it was good, especially with a big giant robot coming as well and beating the ever-living hell out of her. The Chucky vibes in this movie were clearly there. You can tell it was inspired by the 2019 Chucky film. At one point, Evan says, do I die? Which I felt like was a reference to 2001 Space Odyssey where hell just goes, do I dream? That's what I thought. Maybe it was intentional, maybe it was, I just thought it was. I would probably give this movie a 7 out of 10, just because of how some scenes were goofy, and how cheesy it was, and how you can clearly tell this was like Chucky, but better. The 2019 Chucky, but better. Plus, Gemma wasn't a good parent at all. Megan was a good little enjoyable film to watch, and was the first movie I watched this year. I would say... The sequel that's coming, hopefully it does a much better job, especially with the budget made of the first one, which is 12 million, then got back its money, so we guaranteed like two, three more movies. Can't wait to see more of her. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. What did you think of the Megan movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you find it mediocre? If you do, that's fine. I understand. Thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully I can see you guys in more videos. Take care, and watch out for Jason.